Hello everybody, it's Melanie. I am back. I wanted to share this book with you. This is a happy day book that I found at uh, my local antique mall the other day. Um, it's not in the greatest shape, but it's not too bad. So this is a little golden book and this is this happy day book. There's just kind of a size comparison. It's a little bit smaller. This book uh, is published by Standard Publishing, which is a Christian book company. Um, and I think they still make, from looking them up online, it looks like they still make Happy Day books, but they don't look like this anymore. But when I saw this one, I was just, oh, I just love the colors. The illustrations um, and the colors, they're so pretty. So I could not leave it there. I had to bring it home. Just, I love these. Look how pretty all those illustrations are. So I've been working on it a little bit and I wanted to show you what I kind of came up with because I sort of had an epiphany and it's interesting sometimes when something seems so obvious, but then you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that before? But so as I was working on this, I thought all of these flowers are so pretty. Why don't I paint some little motifs of flowers to kind of look like these that I can use throughout the book? Because I was really surprised at the fact that I had nothing in my paper stash with rainbows on it. So I painted, I painted these in watercolor and they're just kind of you know, little flowers similar to those, and then I painted some rainbow. So I painted these, and the first thing I did with them, I scanned them in my computer, and then I printed them out full size and cut them out on just cardstock paper. So I thought, oh, these will be really cute to use, you know, in here, like, for embellishments and sort of tie the book all together. I'm not really one for kits. You know, I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm also a quilter and all of my quilts are scrap quilts. I don't ever use one fabric collection to create um, a quilt. I always use scraps and I've decided, I think that when it comes to these junk journals, I'm all about the scraps here too because I don't necessarily want everything to match. And I love the idea, I don't know, I just love scrappy. So these things don't exactly coordinate either, but this kind of brings it together and I thought this was fun. So then I played a little bit with making some cheesy <laughs> journaling cards using the images that I painted. So I printed those out on some cardstock to play with. And then I've been playing with a new, I printed these on a different printer uh, that I can print eight and a half by 14. I can print legal size on. But these are, this is on some label, full sheet label paper. So this set is actually stickers. So I can cut all these out and also use them or include them, you know, in the book in in the book and, and you know, on the pages and whatnot. The only thing about this label paper is the backing is really hard to get off. It's not um, it doesn't have little lines on it like the back of regular sticker paper does because it's full sheet label. But, so, that's kind of cute. Anyway, so this is fun. I'm gonna cut all these out. So once I had done this, and I was kind of thinking, this is cool. I can make things that coordinate with my book. That night when I was on my way to bed, I was looking at the inside of this, and I absolutely am in love with this doodle background print here. So in bed that night, I created this on my, this is an iPad Pro and I use an Apple Pencil as a stylus. 
So I created this print to coordinate with the background in this book. And it's not exactly the same. I just used some of the same motifs, you know, and then changed it up a little bit, gave it my own spin, whatnot. So once I finished this, and this is what I, I did this for a living, so that's why I know how to do this stuff, but the epiphany that I had was, I thought to myself, why haven't I been doing this all along? Because this is the kind of stuff I know how to do. Crazy, and I just never thought of it. So once I had that, and I'd done that in Procreate, once that was done, I printed it out, or I sent it to my, I used it, I transferred it to my PC, to my computer, and put it in a repeat. So here's our, this is a repeating pattern, a seamless repeat. So after that, I recolored it, and I was really pleased with how it came out. The colors matched great, and the scale's different, but what I was thinking is that then I can use this on the signatures here, and then when you open up the book, it's like the whole end papers match. So I was so excited. But anyway, this isn't this paper, I can only print this eight and a half by 11 on this printer. So I've been printing it today, playing with it on the printer that I have that I can print uh, legal size, eight and a half by 14, and I can't, I can't get the color to match. It, it, the, the color's just perfect on this one, but I'm having color issues with the other printer. So since these pages weren't long enough to use in these signatures, I just stitched on some other pages that I designed to coordinate with it. So this is some of the other, this is that rainbow, the rainbow that I painted here is here, just stretched out and made into a stripe. And then this is just some different versions of rainbow lined paper for writing on. So I just took a piece of this, cut it off and stitched it onto the end to make this page bigger. So that's gonna be the first page that you see when you open up the inside of the book. It'll be like that. And then for the back signature, I had to add on a piece of paper too. And this is just another print that I was playing with. Um, after I finished this one, I just, I worked on another one that I thought was kind of, kind of inspired by it also. So I'm gonna put this one in here. So that's gonna be my, create my signatures. And then I was looking for some paper to put the, or some, not paper, some fabric for the spine. And on this one, I, this book, I decided I'm not gonna do a two inch spine. I'm just gonna have two signatures. So I'm just gonna do a one and a half inch spine. So, and I had some issues with this book because the way that these books were made versus the uh, little golden book, there was only paper in this seam right here. And so when I cut the book apart, this just completely tore off. So I had to put some cardstock or cover stock or paperboard or whatever it is on the back of this to reattach this piece so that I could use the full page. And I still had to cut some of the fore edge off, but without that, it was sticking out way too far and I didn't, didn't want to fold them in and I didn't want to cut them off. So I just reattached the spine by adding a little strip on the front and back covers. So I found this fabric in my stash um, it's a vintage 70s print, um, 70s or 80s. This book is copyright 1980, but this print uh, just, I thought it coordinated perfectly with the front of this book. So I got that ready and then I thought, oh, I should do a print to match this that I can also use inside my book. So. I drew this out on the iPad, and it's also, I mean, it's not the same, but it's inspired by and very similar. Um, and then this is the one I printed on the, my regular printer, and then these are the ones, I printed these double-sided eight and a half by 14 on the big printer. So once I put 
this on here, then I'll also be able to include these pages in the book that will coordinate with the spine and kind of bring the whole thing together. And I can also take these, you know, cut them out, use them for pockets and embellishments and tags and all kinds of things that will just sort of bring the whole book together. So that was my great epiphany was that why, why haven't I done this before, you know, made some coordinating prints and digitals and things that uh, can coordinate with my the books I make. So anyway, I'm really excited to put this book together. I can walk through the signatures with you real quick, show you what I've got so far, and then I think I'm going to glue this, glue this spine on. So here's what you see when you open it up. I just, the illustrations and the color is just so fantastic. So I just pulled some scrapbook paper that I thought kind of coordinated brights that went with the rainbow theme and stuff like that. This is out of a needle needle workbook. Some coffee dyed composition paper. This is more composition paper that I painted with the gift card. Some graph paper. This is paper out of a little golden book encyclopedia. And then some scrapbook paper on there as a little tuck spot. This is more scrapbook paper. Some other paper I have out of a retro floral book. Of course, no junk journal would be complete without some ledger paper. And some more comp paper. This is out of a wildflower book. This is some of that new card stock that Joann's is carrying. It's really heavy. It's, it's more like cover stock. Um, it's only printed on one side, but they're, they've got some really cute prints. This is some 70s... Um, 70s or 80s uh, wrapping paper. <laughs> kind of see that same color theme going on. And then this is just a piece of paper I made with rainbow lines on it for journaling. And then there's the center of that signature. So it's basically the same on the other side. Oh, I forgot to sew that in. So I was going to sew a tuck spot on here. I guess I didn't. I skipped it when I was at the sewing machine. So there's the other side that signature, the first one, and then here's the second signature. I looked up this illustrator and I couldn't find uh, much of his work. He had done some other books for this Happy Day Book Company, um, but I really couldn't find much. I love these butterfly images. This is just metallic paint on composition paper. Okay, sorry about that. My camera came completely, the clamp started coming off and my camera just kept coming down lower and lower and lower. Anyway, just finish this up. So these are basically the same on both, side, both sides. I haven't added in that green paper yet, but there's the middle. And when I, I happen, I, I do journal. I am a journaler. So a lot of my books, I really want you to be able to write in them. So there's a lot of space to write and a lot of space to glue things in. They're not terribly heavily embellished because uh, I want to, to be able to use them. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this on the spine so it can start drying. I'll just mark the center of it. It doesn't have to be perfect.
So once this dries, let me work on my signatures a little bit more and then I'll probably go ahead and bind it, sew my signatures in. I love this book, but I may end up putting it in my Etsy shop because I'm one of those people who, I do journal, but I make far more journals than I can possibly use. So I literally have them in stacks. And I sold quite a few journals in my Etsy store about four years ago, on well, 2014. Um, but I haven't been, I haven't been selling them lately. So I'm going to leave this to dry. Make sure it's all nice and lined up. So that's going to dry. And I may play with my signatures a little more, but I just thought I would share um, the fun stuff I was making to coordinate with this. And thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video or you found something helpful, please click the like button below. And if you subscribe, I'm going to try and make more videos because I'm a recent empty nester. Our only child went off to college, so I am looking for things to occupy my time. So building a, a, a little YouTube channel um, is something I think I want to work on. So anyway, I think I'll create, I'll keep creating content as long as people are interested. So you'll have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.